This podcast is sponsored by the animation studio, Tonic DNA. Welcome to the first episode of the Story Driven Arts Podcast, where our subject is the art of storytelling in the arts. I'm your host, Todd Schaefer. In the past 30 years, I've made a career in the art of storytelling. I've worked as an animation director, character animator, oil painter, illustrator, and screenwriter. I've worked on over 100 commercials, painted racks of oil paintings, illustrated a number of children's books, written and sold a handful of screenplays, and I've directed three of those scripts as animated films. I've studied drawing, animation, painting, and screenwriting under some of the greats of our day. And I currently work as an animation director and supervisor at the animation studio Tonic DNA in Montreal. Like many of you, I've always had a love for both storytelling and art. And I have four children who have grown up to love and pursue the same artistic and storytelling passions that I have. Every year as we travel to visit family, we pass by three museums built to preserve the art of three of my favorite artists, Howard Pyle, N.C. Wyeth, and Norman Rockwell. These artists worked in the early 20th century during the golden age of American illustration. You may not know these artists, yet they are part of a long lineage of storytelling artists that stretches back to Michelangelo and beyond. The history of art is largely the history of storytellers. This might seem strange to modern minds, but if you were to jump back a hundred years before the advent of the camera and abstract expressionistic art, you'd find that most art was not merely decorative or ornamental, it was designed to tell a story. Ancient art tells the story of daily life, and fox hunts, and continental exploration, and conquests, maritime adventures, history, family, religion. The titans of art history, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Rembrandt, told the story of Greek mythology and Christianity. The artists of today work in the same mediums, but we have a new dimension to our storytelling, and that is time and motion. The cinema and the tools of animation allow us to tell stories in ways ancient artists never imagined. This is our heritage, and this is my passion. Yes, there's plenty of room for art and decoration, cultural commentary, and mere representation, but those uses of art have only gained ground in relatively recent history. And as much as I enjoy some of that kind of art, my heart is in art that tells a story. It's often said that the best animators and painters are the best draftsmen. Now, there's a lot of truth in this, just as it can be said that the best novelists are often those who have the best command of their written language. But just as writers need to do more than develop a large vocabulary and learn the rules of grammar to become good storytellers... So too, artists and animators need to do more than just learn how to draw the human figure and create the illusion of light and paint. Yet this is what most of our artistic studies focus on, becoming better at drawing and rendering. Drawing and rendering is only one of the tools we need. The other tool set that our education often overlooks is the ability to create powerful, empathetic character performances properly composed in a frame or stage that tells a clear, meaningful story. Telling stories with images is not an easy craft to master. It takes a passionate pursuit of this craft. And today it's even more challenging. We're not living in the age of Michelangelo. Our society has much more demanding sensibilities because we are a culture fashioned by the media and the arts. Artists today, whether you like it or not, You are either working in the medium of the moving image, or you are competing with it. We look at old movies that have sappy, ham-handed storytelling, but they won awards, and we can't believe audiences used to find that kind of acting and storytelling powerful. And that's in less than a century. We must recognize the artistic storytelling of Raphael's era is much different than the storytelling that will satisfy audiences today. Yet we follow the same principles. For animators, this need for excellence in performance is even greater. There are tens of thousands of actors in Hollywood, yet less than 5% ever get onto a movie or a show. Less than that ever land a secondary or lead role, and fewer still create those performances that resonate with audiences. Sure, the decisions to cast these actors is also complicated by politics, economics, and fear, But when one of these unknown actors are given roles, more often than not, we feel the weakness in their performances, and sometimes we cringe. There's a good reason Daniel Day-Lewis and Helen Murren are bankable actors. 
it's because they deliver consistently solid and powerful performances. We attempt the same thing with our art and animation. It's our job to become bankable. Yes, that requires excellent draftsmanship, but draftsmanship is not enough. Beautiful models can be taught to strike a pose, but that doesn't mean they can carry a performance. And that's why most models who attempt acting don't get very far. They're only there because they look good in the image, not because they can deliver a compelling performance. As artists, if we are to avoid the same fate and stand tall in this lineage that we love, we need to be able to create performances that serve story. And if you're in animation, you need to serve the director's vision. This is what I hope story-driven arts will help you achieve. Whether you're creating gallery paintings, children's book illustrations, or animation, you must learn how to tell a story in art. We come from a masterful heritage. We are artists, we are storytellers, and I believe we are living in the greatest age of storytelling artists in the history of art. Welcome to Story Driven Arts. <laughs>